नमस्ते फ्रेंड्स गुड मॉर्निंग वी गोइंग टू टेल यू समथिंग वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग अबाउट दिस थिंग कॉल्ड एज ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव स्लीप डिसऑर्डर टुडे और ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव स्लीप एपनिया नाउ अ लॉट ऑफ क्वेरीज आर कमिंग ऑन टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल एंड ऑल्सो ऑन आई इंस्टाग्राम पोस्ट अबाउट वट एग्जैक्टली इज ओ एस ए ओ एस ए स्टैंड फॉर ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव स्लीप एपनिया विच इज अ कॉमन ब्रीदिंग स्लीपिंग प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज ऑफ अ breathing issue note that clearly it's a common sleeping issue because of a breathing problem which means our breathing and sleeping are very closely related just by this term now i'm going to tell you few quick points about osa and we're going to go through some of the patients that we've treated in the last few weeks we've been having a lot of patients with osa especially in the last few weeks and hence we thought we're going to brand this as the OSA month we're going to go through that at the end of it but first we're also going to go through some questions and we're going to ask dr madhu about some of the common questions some of the frequently asked questions i'll answer them for you and then we'll go on with further things right madhu so what are the common questions so the first question we often come across is does jaw surgery play an important role in OSA correction yeah very pertinent question because jaw surgery is a treatment for lot of patients with severe osa i say severe but can also be a definitive treatment for patients with moderate level osa now obstructive sleep apnea i'll just explain a little bit before we get down to how jaw surgery solves this problem now what is basically happening in a patient with obstructive sleep apnea is that the muscles of the back of the throat the tongue or the airway behind the upper jaw the nose this obstruction which worsens when they sleep also because of gravity also because of the position of the sleeping also because of the position of the jaws thereby they get snoring one of the things one of the main conditions i'm not saying every patient who snores has osa but a lot of patients who have osa do have snoring as well one of the other things they have is daytime tiredness or lethargy or sleepiness this is because they are not having a good sleep in the night their sleep is disturbed often by bouts of waking up from sleep because when the brain senses less oxygen then it makes the person to wake up and that's why we call it as an obstructive sleep apnea now there are many ways to skin this cat problem because we can you know start with a cpap there are many other treatments like the up3 we can work on the uvula septum we can work on the tongue position orthodontist can give you splints we can wear guide cpap machine and so on and so forth so based on the severity of osa there have been a whole range of treatments that have been prescribed based on mod moderate or severe condition then jaw surgery comes into role now the stanford sleep studies they are the one of the leaders in this aspect of osa treatment and management and in the past couple of decades it has been clearly brought to life with various studies with elaborate literature now that jaw surgery literally is the cure for osa i'm going to go through that a little while later we're going to show you measurements we're going to show you scans we're going to show you on the model we're going to show you our patients so you going to understand this very clearly so to answer a question of is jaw surgery a solution for patients with osa yes in a lot of patients but no not in all the patients all right okay the second question is when we talk about jaw surgery are we talking only about the lower jaw or we can do a by jaw surgery yeah so it varies again whenever a patient has a severe obstructive apnea and depending on where that apnea lies or where the obstruction is we might have to do a by jaw or we might have to do a single jaw even a mortis and tendon genioplasty has been proven to improve the airway and thus reduce the obstruction but we can also do other procedures like a clockwise or an anti clockwise rotation of the upper jaw anti clockwise increases the airway much more significantly than the clockwise obviously bringing the upper jaw forwards is also helpful we're going to show you this on this model a little while later once we finish all the questions all right people have concerns about their bite will their bite change after a bite very or? pertinent again yes a lot of the times patients that undergo a corrective jaw surgery for a osa 
the bites do change. And I keep telling this to some of our patients who come here with severe problems. I tell them, look, your first issue is function. In the pyramid of facial aesthetics, function is number one. Number two is symmetry and then the proportions. So obviously, if a patient has a functional issue, that's more in the rung or the importance rather than just aesthetics. But do remember that nature has so made that if a person or an individual has a proportional face, if the person has a beautiful face, very often that patient will, or that person will also have good function. So that is why you see that there's a high relationship between obstructive sleep apnea and a face that's not very proportional. And therefore, to answer your question, if, if the bite will be hampered, yes, for a short while, but in the long run, it's going to be better. Not only are we going to improve the breathing, not only are we going to improve the function of breathing and sleeping, but we also, also in most of the patients, augmenting facial proportions, making them look younger, and also making them look more beautiful, more aesthetically proportional. All right. And this is the last one. Uh, does snoring improve? And when exactly do you um, you can tell that the snoring is improved after surgery? Does it so, vary? Yeah. So snoring, as I mentioned, and obstructive sleep apnea are not directly linked, which means all patients who snore do not have OSA, but a high percentage of patients who have OSA do snore, especially when the snoring is loud. I think it's a thing that you can visit your doctor. We can get various studies. One of the simple studies is what we did for this patient yesterday. It's called as a polysomnography. Now, a polysomnography report, this report dates today, 15-11-2022. And it's by this ResMed company. And if you look here, the indices of AHI is 43.4. And the result is showing that there's a suspected pathological breathing disorder. Now, a polysomnography is a simple sleep study where the leads are placed on the patient's body before they go to sleep in the night and the next day the computer gives you the result. This is one of the basic elementary tests that we need before we embark on the process of curing these patients with a OSA. All right, now having said that, and having exhausted all our questions, I'm first of all going to show you a simple thing which you're going to appreciate on this model if you look carefully. I'm not going to be able to move the lower jaw because it's attached here. In reality, this moves more. But you can see here the upper jaw has been osteotomized and kept. Now, the airway that we're talking about is the space here, right? This is the space that we have for breathing, which is behind the lower jaw, behind the tongue, so to say more precisely, and behind the upper jaw. Now, look at this. This is that. So, when we move the upper jaw, obviously, there is more gap that's created behind the upper jaw and the airway. But, when I do an anti-clockwise, this is a clockwise movement, clockwise, and if I take it up, this is an anti-clockwise. So, when I do a clockwise movement, this is this movement, you see there's still an improvement in the airway, but not so much. But if you do an anti-clockwise movement, you see this part where my thumb rests now. As I rotate it forward, I hope that's visible, there's more gap that's being created. I'm going to show you this with our before and after scans as well. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is that when you are doing an anti-clockwise movement of the entire upper jaw, you create more space posterior behind the upper jaw, which is very essential for patients with very severe OSA. Therefore, a uh, by jaw in these kind of patients does really improve their condition. Now, we're going to go through some of the patients that we've sorted out in the very near, uh, very uh, past, very recently. So the first one is this girl. You can see the improvement. This looks like it's been predominantly a lower jaw work, but it was also an upper jaw work. I did mention if you rotate it clockwise and anti-clockwise, there's not going to be a huge difference in the facial aesthetics, but there's going to be a huge improvement in the functionality of the breathing and therefore improves sleeping. Right, we go on to the next patient. And here you can see again how the upper jaw and lower jaw 
have both been rotated, augmented, brought forwards while we corrected the OSA. A milder variant when we didn't have to do so much of movement. But all cases, you'll also appreciate that the facial aesthetics has only gotten to look better. In this patient alone, maybe, maybe the facial aesthetics hasn't improved so much. I've put this to show that sometimes it does happen that the facial aesthetics doesn't improve too much because the condition you see, the vertical height has been augmented and this height has been improved. And this is the same patient here. I'm going to show you the scans now where you can very clearly see the improvement uh, that's happened. So you can see here how the... Okay, I'm going to show you a very critical thing here. So look at my cursor there and the distance. This is being measured about a centimeter and this was before we did uh, obstructive sleep apnea correction surgery. Now we move on to the post-op. Look at that distance. This is an extra centimeter and four millimeters. So extra 14 millimeters we've achieved in this way on the gap between. Now this is a huge improvement and we've done this as you can see with a bijaw and a genio to correct the sleep issues. I'm going to show you another view as well where you're probably going to appreciate more of this which is the sagittal view and look at that. These are Sidexi's computer generated images of before and after. Same cuts, everything same. And I'm going to show you the measurements now in the pre-op and post-op. So you can see the soft tissue improvement. Earlier I showed you the heart tissue. Now you're going to see the soft tissue improvement. So you see that's about 4 millimeters. That was before we did the sleep apnea surgery. And that's a soft tissue. It's about 10 and a half. So we've got literally about seven millimeters of increase. And you will notice here, this was like pencil thin to now it's like really thick. It's much better. It's like double pencil or more. So this is the whole impact, you know, that this kind of surgery does by moving the maxilla, by rotating it in either clockwise or anti-clockwise. In this case, anti-clockwise. This full area, observe this area and observe this area. Whatever is light color like this, dark color, sorry, it's all the air. Whatever it's dark is bony. So you can see the improvement in this space. Significant improvement. Now I'm going to take you through some more views of this as we compare, as we move. And you'll appreciate that there is a continuous increase uh, in the posterior aspect of this. And in this particular cut, when you see there's literally no space there, you have a space here. So that's the beauty of doing these kind of surgeries. Look in front as well. If you notice carefully here, uh, there is a plate here and there's a plate here. There's a screw there. And that's the kind of advancement we've got in the upper jaw in that area. I can show you what that measurement corresponds to as well. So the anterior advancement is about 10 millimeters. This is apart from the anti-clockwise rotation that we've done and we've literally stretched and pulled and rotated the upper third of the face, lower third of the face in an anti-clockwise direction, got the bite to fit in, thereby improving the space in the most important aspects of the maxillofacial skeleton. If you remember, I did say there are many other options that we can do to have some amount of improvement for patients with OSA. Our chest physician is also involved. We have other specialists, including anesthesiologists who is involved. So it's a teamwork nonetheless. But when it's a severe case of an OSA, I have to again stress the point that this kind of maxillomandibular surgeries is the cure. We've cured several hundred patients over the last decade and more who have had severe OSA, who've had various issues with their lifestyle, with their productivity, 
with their issues with hypertension and so on and so forth. And all of this is curable, it's sortable, it's fixable for life. There's going to be no scars outside. Obviously, there are going to be a lot of plates and screws inside. But this is a change that's going to have a, a total improvement for life. And thereby, this is not only, not only going to augment the facial aesthetics, but really, most importantly, give them nice sleep and much better breathing. So I hope this video was clear. You could understand more about this concept of OSA and how this can be treated. There's a large, vast topic. So I'm sure you'll have more questions. And if you do, we have this website or we have the YouTube channel or we have the Instagram. You can message us and we'll be more than happy to message you. You can also WhatsApp us for appointments or if you have any queries and be more than happy to guide you through this. Thank you.